Okay, well, we're not actually filming, but I'm gonna put this on because I keep forgetting. Uh, Piss off. Uh, yeah, baby. Look, we're, we're still not working on it, but I found bigger fuel line. Okay, what do you got? All right, it's day two. Like two weeks later. <laughs> day two. I got one of these. Bad boys. Because I think the other one's just not giving us that suck that, that we crave. Sweet chooch. So I got this, and hopefully the little fittings are pointed the right way. And uh, yeah, the problem is it's kind of hard to see. You can just barely see it down in there, but this power steering pump is like right in the way. The so. Saginaw box. Yes, the Saginaw box. So the challenge is going to be. I think I'm going to have to pull the power steering pump out. Yeah. And uh, see where that. See where that, that gets you. See where that gets us. I think this is how I had it. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Whatever, as long as it doesn't kill me. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Is it like just plugging? Is it structural at this point? It's doing something. <laughs> I think that's structural. Did you get it? Oh, I did. First I got it. Try. First try, baby. It was nine sixteenths. Like how the the nest for the bird is illuminated in the van right now. Really? It's beautiful. Yeah. Can I just move it up? And that might just give, like... You got them backwards. Oh, well, I was... <laughs> there we go. Yeah. I got one. <laughs> the plastic ratchet that I'm using didn't break. <laughs> That's why we gotta go. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> Bye. Right. Bye. Bye. <laughs> See if I can get it with the double wrench or Roni. Most of the time this ends in only sadness. Ugh. Hold on, you gotta click it down a few. Nope. Ah, <laughs> oh, there we go. Got it. Yeah. And there it went. It slacked up real nice. Yeah. It doesn't want to go out. Yeah, I'm gonna have to take this fucking steering box out. <laughs> yep. I'm worried that that steering box is then going to be pinched in there by some other part. <laughs> and we're gonna just dig ourselves deeper and deeper into like pain. Yeah. And it doesn't really feel like it was doing much. It's just very soft. Ah, there yeah. we go. <laughs> Ooh, it's got a bunch of ickis yuckis in there. No wonder it wasn't pumping shit. The dirt of the ancients. Don't look quite right. Let's compare it, because yeah, they don't look quite right. But, no guarantees it's supposed to be like that. Um, this one's upside down. Oh. It looks like, I mean, it's like, look at the... Oh, <laughs> yeah. That's the right one, according <laughs> to Summit. Summit told me it was, and they would never lie to me. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> this one's a feistier one than that one. I'll tell you, I'll tell you that much. But it's the wrong one. <laughs> yeah, it's not happy. But does that mean that this one could potentially be the right one, and this one could potentially be the wrong one? I mean, that was the one that's been in the van for a long time. Are you sh yeah, but it might have been like, that's why I couldn't get it out as well is because this is like maybe you just meant for a regular 460 and you just kind of crammed it in there. Uh, maybe this one is the... <laughs> maybe. We'll find out. Silhouette of the bumper with the blue sky. Reaching for the skies. Reaching for the stars. Okay. Where's the bolts? <sighs> Got them. All right, I'm gonna need you to okay. probably go be the, the the grabby the guy who holds the steering pump out of the way. Again. Okay, <laughs> why don't you show the fine people what you've created? <laughs> Get a load of that. There's my barb. <laughs> the Burrett. Yeah. Bill Burrett. I'm a master mechanic. Yeah. <laughs> just deburring it, you know. You just deburring it the right way. Like a real master mechanic. This is how they do it in the assembly line. This line. is how NASCAR, I'm professionally trained at the factory. Henry Ford. At the NASCAR factory. Oops, I was listening. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> Just like in the NASCAR factory. Yeah. There you go. It's like bending. <laughs> what a cheap fuel pump. This is terrible. It's like bending the stupid little housing for the diaphragm. Summit quality, baby. It's terrible, man. No wonder it was like a $10 fuel pump. <laughs> Chandler, I am here. Y'all are there. there.
You want to grab some fuel line to run down to it from the Kirk Crabulator? Yes, ma'am. Just got to get it tight. Get it right, get it tight. <laughs> I'm keeping that in the final cut. <laughs> yeah, this is how it should have been. That had a fucking truck one on it, man. It thinks the oil cap is a face. Yes, ma'am. She's a runner. I just gotta tighten this bolt. Then we can crank it and see if it pukes any fuel out of that hose. That would be a Christmas miracle. All right, let's see if she's a gushing granny. Oh, hey, there it went. Is that gas? <laughs> yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we're just moments away from watching this motherfucker spring to life. Is it's this one? Yeah. Post clamp. I'm hoping. All right, here we go. Come on. Come on. I smell it. Oh, yeah. I smell it too. Oh. It's leaking gas all over. Out of the hose clamp on the. Oh! <laughs> She's splooging. This bad, bad line is all. <laughs> we'll just run it down the tranny. Um, it's 2021. You can't say that anymore. <laughs> but we should probably have it as an extinguisher. Yeah, right. Too bad there's not like 10,000 of them in the garage right now. Nah. You know, should, should I go get one or? No, man. Our fire's cool. Come on. That's not what our. Is that one? Maybe. I mean, it's. it's oh, you know what? It's spat. Yeah, I, mean, I was we're just fucking <laughs> putting fuel through the wrong goddamn. We're just deadheading it, right? That's something it's not supposed to be doing. <laughs> That's why it splooged at us. <laughs> Watch. It's gonna splooge again. It's gonna blow off, ready? Right, yep. That's, that's all right. What the problem was. Well, we'll find out. <laughs> hey. That is not it. It's definitely this one. It's kind of funny that it ran that way though. Just puking fuel on itself. Just bursting at the top. Yeah, it's just a float is stuck shut on it, I think. I think puke carb was funnier though. It was funny. It's actually running. Yeah? Yeah, something's going on. Where it, it's <laughs> it was just running off of the the puke. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> All right. Well, it's not really part of the video, but I got the car pulled off. We're gonna get this baby rebuilt. I'm gonna send our boy Uncle Calvi home with a camera, and he's gonna show you bitches what's up. We're here in my beautiful garage. Wow, look at all my riches. And I wanna to try to rebuild this carburetor. So I've never done one of these before, so we get to learn together. So I'm gonna guess I have to start by taking off all of these little fellas. Now comes the hardest part of all of this. Oh, usually these don't come off that easy. So we'll just unbolt all these guys and try to separate the top from the bottom, I guess. And we'll see what happens. I don't know a screwdriver, this is stupid. Enjoy editing stuff. Alright, let's try this again. I got this handy screwdriver. There we go. So I'm gonna guess that this thing just can't flow fuel in because this float is gummed shut. So we're gonna see if we can't ungummer using this B12 chemical tool, chem tool that I've never used before. Usually I just use brake clean or something, but the guy on YouTube who actually knew how to do these carburetors said that that's what he uses, so we're gonna just trust him. I've done VW carbs of plenty and Hollies and but never this. Never a Edelbrock slash Carter. 
and find somewhere where we can pry. Like right here in this little nipple. Oh yeah. And we'll just try to take these out without losing them. Aha. It's itty bitty. Little teeny guy. I'm gonna do this the right way and <laughs> take it off with any of those pliers. No. There we go. Alright. Right, let's see what, oh yeah, they stink really bad, but I can see the little float mechanism moving right there. So, I don't know, maybe I freed it up. Okay, yeah, this is a lot harder than what I've done in the past. Well, we're going to spray some of this stuff in because I, I just want to do it. All right. All right, so just gonna spray a little on there, spray a little on there, just kind of give her a little, I don't know. Like a drizzle, you know, like if you were gonna like roast some potatoes in the oven or something, we'll just kind of give it a little drizzle. We'll put him off to the side for now and let him think about what he did. Mess with these floats. I have a complete rebuild kit here, but I don't know that I'm actually gonna need everything in it. And this car looks pretty damn complicated, so for a knuckle dragger guy like me, so. Ah. We're gonna break the seal that prohibits return or whatever it says. Ooh, that was satisfying. Wow, this is pretty fancy. It comes in a little box and everything. Got that seal for no return? That's, now that's high class. Anybody who's ever had a slinky knows what's going on right now. There we go. I don't know, the first super obvious thing to me is to take these pins out for the full, that hold the floats. Oh, I didn't even need it. Give it the violence. We didn't even need to resort to violence. Oh wow. Okay. Usually those are like seated in, and you have to like tap them out. But those are pretty, pretty easy to do. All right. So we got some floats here. The main thing I always do with floats is hold them under water and make sure they don't bubble, especially with these metal ones because they can have like a little hole corroded in them when you submerge them if they're not good. They kind of look like little whales, like a. Like a, like a pot of whales. Stinky, lacquery whales. And I'm sure there's some carburetor person out there that's screaming at me like, No, don't put them in water, it'll corrode. No, whatever. And I don't see any bubbles coming up. It wants to float back at me. So this float is floating. And again, I do not have anything bubbling at me. The floats still float. Looks like this car had a leak at one point because there's a bunch of RTV, like spooged around on it so so we've got that laid down and I'm just gonna kind of like lay this bad boy down and we'll make sure that I can see all the holes on these little slits right here this one has like a big opening so we'll see I'm gonna guess that's not gonna cause us any trouble but we'll find out but yeah looks like we got ourselves a right gasket here so we'll set all of our new stuff over here to the side and I'll just kind of go through so here's our Floats and I can definitely feel this one right here is sticking. It's like really rough. It looks feels like these are sprung, which is kind of like an off-road car thing, at least with Hollies. But, ooh. So we'll just kind of put those in a corner over there where we're probably gonna forget what they were. I don't think I can get the camera focused because I'm not a very smart guy, but and Stefan does the filming, but that needle's like junk. I mean I can just like it's like falling apart as I touch it. So not supposed to be happening. The nails are supposed to seal. This is not a carburetor lesson video. If you want a carburetor lesson, go watch one of them yuppies. Okay, big fatty, can you do it? Oh, there we go. All right, so that boy's loose. Wow, it's a big old. <laughs> okay, okay, so it looks like the little meshies go in before the seats do, which, this one's this side with the inlets already got one, but we'll, I don't know, we'll just do it like it says. Ooh! Now the other thing that could have been plugging this up is there's a little filter behind this inlet. This is the inlet for the fuel. There's like a little screen back behind there. We're gonna see if that potentially is full of schmitz, as they say. Ooh. I don't really see anything in it. Also, always make sure to wear gloves and eye protection. 
Oh, the other problem could be these floats have like a, you bend this little tab to adjust where like the floats open and shut at. We could potentially have it not, oh look, a new little filter. We could potentially have it tweaked so that it's, or both of them, tweaked so that they're not doing what they're supposed to. And they might be stuck shut or something, um, which would be bad <laughs> in technical terms. Got this new screen that goes behind our inlet, so we'll just take a peek in there. Everything looks cool. I'm gonna. It looks like this passes through and also feeds this ball over here. So I'm just gonna give it a little squirt and see if I can see that stuff. Yeah, yep. See it coming out? Why not? Some guys say you need to run fuel filters. I say there's a little shitty screen that barely fits the hole that it goes in. And so what if you suck metal shavings and dirt and little small creatures down into your engine? I mean, what are you, a coward who wears eye protection and gloves? Not me. I don't think so. All right, that little filter's really not going to do much, but we're just going to rock it. Oh, how stretchy there. Because I don't have a seat because I'm too poor. It looks like you can sort of drop these little screens into there, which seems a little weird, but that's what the book says to do. And it's rebuilt more of these than I have. Yeah, when I took this thing apart, there was absolutely zero feel in any of these, either of these carburetor bowls. So, this crab was not getting fuel. Now it's time for the hardest thing ever, like I was talking about. Hardest part of all of this, getting the socket off the stupid Harbor Freight little thing. <sighs> there we go. And be kind of gentle, because they're brass, but they're kind of corroded there, I don't know if this camera can show that, but yeah, you can kind of see the, the icky yuckiness. Let's some of this B12 chem tool that I'm breathing in. So we'll just wipe off the shaft on this one. Okay, wow. This stuff actually does seem like it takes off all that nastiness. I mean, it does like eat that sludge. So I'm back from cleaning this thing and going and drinking some water because this shit was making my head hurt. But I'm not a coward. Breathing all this stuff. But anyways, the B12 chem tool stuff did a really good job. I mean, I just cleaned the top so far but I mean, if you look at the difference freaking it had all that like dirt and stuff on it and that stuff I mean do I think brake cleaning would do a worse job mm, I don't know but it definitely did do a really good job hosing off all the weird fuel scummy stuff so yeah good job B12 chem tool it's a, it's a pump I wonder if that's accelerator pump whatever it is Getting a new gasket. You know this red guy? He makes me nervous. This feels dry, kind of gross. I want to put the blue one back in. I'm just gonna say the blue one feels better. It feels more rubbery, and if I was a vacuum pump, I'd want the blue one. So I'm gonna. Well, I guess it does move around. Whatever. We're going with the blue one. Ooh. Yeah, actually, this one's a little fucked up. Or sorry, for shizzled up for the kids at home. So I'm gonna use the new one, I guess. This stuff actually does do a very good job of cutting through all the old gunky feel. Thank you, YouTube carburetor guy, who I watched about three minutes of the carb rebuild video before doing this. So inside the old needles, there's like a little spring in this hole. And I'm not gonna worry about it too much. I don't think they make that much of a difference, personally. I tried to put some on my truck, and uh, they didn't really seem to do anything. It's just kind of like a off-road thing if the carb's like bouncing around, but I don't really think this van's gonna be too, doing too much wild off-roading. Uh, I guess they look fairly similar, but we're gonna, no, they're not. These are not set the same. So we're gonna set the float height here, and the way it says to do it is to take a 7 16ths drill bit. So if you look at the instructions, you set the float so that you can stick a 17, 7 sixteenths bleh, drill bit down in there. And that's where they should rest. And the way you adjust that, these little tabs here are the stops. So 
no garage adventure is complete without your garage foofy. Hey, are you foofing? <laughs> hey, we get garage foofy. These bad boys, I took those, hosed them off, let garage foofy into the garage. It's always hard to get the shaft in the hole. All right, so those things are setting how they should. And I've got this drill bit, so it's like this drill bit. So they're set a little bit. That one's set a little bit high. So we should just bend these down a little bit. And yeah, that's the magic right there. So we're looking good. So when these are fully open, there should be this much room. And there is not. Let's try that again. Here we go, right on the money right there. So I think I'm gonna cut this top part done. We got new needles and seats. We got new, we got the floats readjusted. I just kind of cleaned everything out here. Um, yeah, I'm gonna say that that's pretty good. Oh, get in there, boy. Oh yeah. You can't really see that, but. We'll use this flashlight so you can. Ooh. <laughs> We're not icky. Clean. So I'm gonna just scrub out those bowls real quick. <gasps> what do you do it? Do you wanna clean the carburetor? Just checking, you can go dig holes in my backyard now. The, I gotta be honest, this B12 stuff is actually really good. Please sponsor me. See how dirty this freaking thing is we're gonna go clean that all right so clean this off is it perfect no is it a hell of a lot better yes yes it is all right so looks like it's got some chokes here it's not unlike it's I keep saying this, this thing is not too different from a VW crabulator all right the camera died so I don't know where I was at I pulled out these stinky little fellas here and cleaned them up. And I'm gonna change out these sticky little gaskets that lurk down within. I don't know. Ooh, look at that. Sweet chocolate. Oh, yeah. Fine wine. In the words of my little baby brother. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Fine wine. I am decently happy with that. It's all pretty clean down inside. Got those. Now we'll take off these little friends and clean them. I know I'm providing some extremely helpful commentary here. You know, there's not much to talk about when you're rebuilding a carburetor. I'll tell you what. I felt some crunchy when I pulled this out. And those don't look like they should be bent together like that. I kinda like that over there too. No, not really. Good thing everything's made out of brass and I can just bend it. This looks pretty good. There's just a little soot on there from backfiring and being a carburetor, but cleaner right on off. Yeah, this guy's plugged. It's the idiest bittiest little hole. I'm just gonna poke it out with this brush. There we go. Now that's doing what we want. Alright, so we actually found something not working. This part is actually in really good shape. This has been sitting for six trillion years. And... Oh, look at all that brown. Yeah, I think that basically the reason this thing just wasn't running right because it couldn't get fuel, all that good stuff is just, this is all gummed. This all looks gummed up. I will say this B12 stuff kind of burns your fingers, but we're not a coward, so. We don't wear the gloves. Come on, you. Come on out, boy. Had to get out that square. So I'll take this new little guy, I'll drop him down in there. We'll put this the square of justice on top of it. Here's our little squirties. That's actually what they call them in the manual, little squirties. It says make sure to make sure that the make sure that the make sure that the little squirties are squirting and look at those little squirties go. 
Yeah. <laughs> Forgot the spray down in here once that little ball was gone. Ooh, there's yuckiness. Take this little filler back on up. See what little squirties. It's the technical term. If you look in the manual, he'll call them little squirties. So if you need a little squirties rebuild kit, you can go to edelbrock.com slash little squirties for your little squirties rebuild kit. I'm not seeing a whole lot more that's obvious in here. The only thing is there's some little guys down inside here, which I'm assuming are little jets. I think really whenever I work on anything, I kind of turn into like a southern guy and I start saying like, yeah, go on now and come here, boy, and things like that. These are the little friends. That's the technical term in the manual. If you need fresh little friends, go to edelbrock.com slash little friend rebuild kit. So for both of these jets, or if you want to be technical little friends, back down in. And boys is back in. Now we'll come over, because this is all should be pretty pretty good. I mean, I guess these were probably set ballpark right because this car was like daily driven. All right, so the idle air thing is clear by the looks of it because it's squirting chem tool everywhere and getting me oh so high. Yeah. I think that's about as good as I can do. I'm not gonna take the choke apart because my understanding is the choke is working until I have reason to believe that it is not. Be careful not to bend our floats. There we go. All right, go ahead and tighten them boys back up. I breathed in so much cam tool and poorly rebuilt so much carburetor. Uh oh. Go do all the other ones and we'll revisit. That spooks me because there was like a bunch of RTV there before, like that wouldn't tighten down. And now I think I'm finding out why. I think that hole is actually like stripped out or something. Yep, yes, I'm, she's stripped. I never before used tap and die thing. This thing just falls right through. The only other thing I can do is see if I have a bolt that's long enough to go through there and then I can put a nut on the other side. But don't fly with me. I don't want to have an RTV-tastic carburetor, so I think we can just put a long bolt with a nut on the back side. It's a bummer, but it's not a showstopper. <laughs> I don't remember how these went. I think Mama forgot that your chicken. <laughs> Nobody ever gets meat chicken. All right, pretty sure that's how it goes. Well, I think this thing's just about rebuilt. But once we solve that little issue right there with the little gappy, we should be in business. All right. Bye bye. Now that's quality. That's right, quality. You can. It only wants to focus on your face. There it goes. You gotta dig through my bucket of saw blades to find a nice crescent wrench or something.